Hello everyone, how's it going? It's Vasco from the Angular University. Welcome! In this lesson we are going to cover the Angular 2 router resolve functionality. How to write resolvers for the Angular 2 router. Specifically we are going to cover the case of writing a data resolver using observables. If you find yourself in a situation where you are trying to do a transition between routes and the transition is not happening, it might have to do with something that we are going to talk in the end of this video. It has to do with how we should write our observables inside our resolver. So stay tuned, it's coming right up. So the lesson form would take here as input a lesson. We should pass it in a lesson object as input. Let's first read it from the database. So how can we do that? We could read it directly in the edit lesson component but we are going to do it in a slightly different way. We are going to read it using a router resolver. So how does this work? We start by injecting in this component the activated route. In this activated route, we have here available a property called data. This data property receives input data for the component that was previously retrieved before the component was created by the router. So if we subscribe to the data observable, we are going to receive here a data object. In this data object, we are going to extract a lesson that is already available for us. And we are going to find it under the property lesson of the data value. This property here, lesson, of the edit lesson component will be of type lesson. So let's import lesson. Now, how do we fill in this lesson data before the component is even created? If you go back to the router config, what we need to do is to the edit lesson component, we need to configure here a router resolver. To configure a router resolver, let's see what properties we have here. We have here the property resolve. Now in here we are going to configure which data resolvers are triggered just before we create the edit lesson component. We are going to create here a resolver for the lesson property and we are going to call it lesson resolver. This class does not exist yet, so let's create it. We are going to go here to the shared folder and here in the model folder, we are going to create a file called lessonresolver.ts. And inside it, we are going to define a class called lesson resolver. Now, how is this class implemented in order to be a valid router resolver? Well, this class needs to simply implement the resolve interface. This resolve interface takes a parameter type and we are going to make it a parameter of type lesson. So we import the lesson and now we are going to implement the resolve method of the interface. Let's see what is the signature of this method. So we take as first argument a activated route snapshot and here a second argument the whole router state. In this resolve method we are going to return an observable of any in this case. We are not going to return a promise in our implementation. A resolver is actually also a Angular 2 injectable so this is just like the lesson service we should configure it in the injectables of our application. Let's switch here to our application module and what we're going to do is we are going to provision the lessons resolver here in the providers of our module declaration. Now because this is an injectable this has access to any of the injectables of the application and this includes of course the lesson service that we are going to use to retrieve the lesson data. So how do we retrieve the lesson data? Via the route, activated route snapshot, we have here available via the parameters of the router, the ID parameter, we have available the URL for the lesson. So let's use it to retrieve the lesson using the lesson service. Let's do that. If we use the lesson service and we use the find lesson by URL, and if we pass it in the route params ID property, this will return us the lesson. So we can actually make this observable and observable of lesson. If we go back to the router configuration, we can now import the lesson resolver. 
Now let's go back to the edit lesson component. As we can see, we are assigning the lesson that we received from the data lesson property. We are assigning it to this variable. To make sure that this is working, we are going to use the do operator as before to do a console.log. We are going to try this out and we are going to run into a very common observable related problem. Take a look, we are going to go to this lesson, so this is the first lesson of the first course and we are going to click edit lesson. Now what we can see is that the transition is not made, we did not lower the edit lesson screen. And why is that? In order to understand what's going on, let's go back to our lesson resolver. So take a look, we are returning here in the resolve method, we are returning an observable of lesson. And this observable is built using find lessons by URL, which is internally built using Angular Fire. Now the Angular Fire observables that are returned by the Angular Fire API, they are not completed after the first emission of the first value. So if someone goes, let's say here to the database and they would add it here, the long description that would trigger the emission of a new value for the lesson with this URL. So what's going on here is that the resolve method, when it receives an observable, it expects that observable to eventually complete. And only after the observable completion will the routing navigation be triggered. So in this case, what we need to do is we need to return to the call of resolve, we need to return an observable that completes and this observable emits one value but then it never completes. So one way of ensuring that this observable completes after emitting the first value is, it, is for example to call first on it. Another way would be to call take one, so that would work too. Let's use the operator first, let's try this out now. If we now go back to the lesson details screen and we click on the edit lesson button, now the routing transition completes. This is because the observable that we are returning is completing due to the first operator. And this scenario of a hanging route navigation that we have just shown, this is just one example among many of how when we are dealing with observables, either returning them from our API calls, etc., or sending observables back to the framework, it's important to bear in mind when does this observable complete, because that might lead us to some strange situations like it's the case here. For example, there are RxJS operators that won't work if you try to use them with an observable that doesn't complete. So it's just something to bear in mind.